Hello! Oh! Hayden! Thank you for the sub! Welcome back! 13 months of sub time. Holy shit. How y'all doing today, chat? Sorry, I was I was running quite behind today. I don't quite know where. Well, I know where all the time went. <laughs> I guess I can show you some of that in a bit. Um, but anyway, welcome back to another stream. It is Saturday, the 29th of May, and I forgot to pay rent yesterday, so I still have to do that. <laughs> Which means that I slept with a checkbook. <laughs> Christ. Oh, but anyway... We're, we're back for another stream. I plan to work on some pre-commit CI stuff today, implementing a deploy system, getting closer to continuous deployment. It's going to require a lot of refactoring to make um, the tests run nicely and not on my machine because <laughs> they current depend, uh, currently depend on my AWS setup, which is not great. So we're going to be doing a lot of test refactoring and CI systems set up stuff and hopefully get things deploying nicely by by the end of all of that um but anyway let me say hi to everyone who is here uh, and then we can get started looks like kevin Stroberg was first today congratulations kevin on being first it's good to see you again drunk time lord hello hello you almost almost snuck in there silly buttons good to see you again hello hello dunstable ramsey how's it going coder says finally i'm getting some new ads capital one baby hmm not sponsored by Capital One. <laughs> Silly Button says, do they have ads on Twitch? I've never how have you never seen an ad on Twitch? I feel like Twitch's ads are really good about getting around the ad blockers. Kevin's Joburg! I don't know what's up with TTS right now. It was not working last stream either until I re re-upped it. Let's see if it'll work this time. Seems good! There we go. Kevin's Joburg, thank you for the resub at tier three for ten months. You big simp, you. <laughs> We've got the Kevin's Joburg command. Kevin Joburg. Joburg. There we go. Kevin, stop spending money you don't have. Well, thank you for the resub. Appreciate that and appreciate your continued support. It's always good to see you. S1 Cube, welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Um, Drunk Tom says, I don't get ads on this channel. Huh. Weird. Well, I don't run ad breaks. I know I'm supposed to because I'm a partner, but... Eh. <laughs> Kevin, 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 off, off to a wonderful start of the stream. Thank you for five gift subs to Nutlobe, Godwo, Drunk Time Lord at four months, El Dudorino, Art Literacy Story. Welcome to Subdom. Thank you for the gift subs, Kevin Schober. And um, here's your buttons. Speaking of buttons, silly buttons, thank you for the 10 bits. And uh, OX45, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fiti, thank you for the follow. And Blackbox, also jumping in on this hype train with the five gift subs to Robin Malfit at three months, Nixative at four months, Coder at two months, Dunstable Ramsey, and Raywaltz at two months. And what, we're two minutes into stream and um, we're, 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 already, we're already ready to go. I already have to switch to the... Uh, <laughs> to the... Um, the hot tub category, right? <laughs> Welcome to Just Chatting. Uh, but thank you. Appreciate appreciate your support. Uh, <laughs> wait. Why is everything out of order? Oh, wait. The first subs were still going through. I see now. I understand. I read them way too quickly. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Drink Diamond says, Oh, it's Saturday. I was wondering why I'm not sleepy while you're streaming. Yes, yes. The EU-friendly stream. RKJ, hello, hello, good to see you again. Walker Codes, how's it going? And Hayden, of course. Oh man, I'm so far behind. Journey and AI, good to see you. With the hyper parkour and pog champ emotes. Nice, nice. Black box! You did make it to the start of the stream. You're here! Oh, speaking of start of the stream, I forgot to get my water. <laughs> so we're gonna have to um We're gonna have to get them in a second. Uh, Drunk Time Lord says C I C D's nuts. I <laughs> got him. Oh, that's good. Whoa! Krampus iPad also jumping in on this hype train to, with a gift sub to Prono J at seven months. Black Box, who gifted subs but now has received one in return. Acid UK at six months. I am Digia at three months. And Joe Lafarsi, welcome to Subtem and thank you, Krampus iPad. And we're 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 out of buttons, chat. <laughs> we're out of buttons. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it all. Um. <clears throat> Welcome, Hlinge and Fiti. Hello, hello. And Graham's iPad. Good to see you as well. 
Um, bum, bum. We got silly buttons. We got black box with the gift subs. Uh, Kevin Joburg says that was my gift money for Mother's Day. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> black box says don't mention it, dude. No, I'm gonna mention it, black box. Thank you for the gift subs. <laughs> Um, I love the username also. Wait, which username? Which which username did you like? Because there's a lot of good ones in here. There's a lot of good ones in there. Bitchit says, hey everyone. Wow, so many gifts up. Yeah, we're off, we're off to a crazy start today. A, do we see buttons? Yeah, I should really make a button emote, you know? Are there any people left to give subs to? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, if you look at chat, basically everyone is subbed at this point. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, let's talk about what I want to do today, what we started doing last stream, and that I paid for, <laughs> I paid for GitHub Pro, so that's, that's a thing. Well, that's a nice, nice name here. Oh, I guess you probably, maybe you want to start with the, with, with the drama. Do you want to start with the drama first? I know y'all fucking love drama, uh, so we can do that. Jay Phils! Thank you for the resub at 10 months. Hey, the TTS worked that time. Nice, nice. So, well, I didn't pay for GitHub Pro. I paid for Organization Pro. So I am currently paying for me and my bot to be part of an organization. Which is, it seems a little silly that I have to pay for a, a bot, but, you know, <laughs> that's the way things go, I guess. Bitch it has resubbed with Prime at three months. Thank you for the resub. Appreciate your continued support. And Kevin Stjoberg with the 100 bits. Woohoo, let's fucking go! Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's that's our level five hype train. We did it. <laughs> Congratulations, chat. Oh man, there's gonna be so many emotes given out this time. What does GitHub Pro do? I have it by default now, so I thought everything is unlimited. Yeah, I actually don't know what GitHub Pro itself does. Koenig! Thank you for the sub with Prime with the Love Peak L. I don't know. TTS, what are you doing? What I don't understand. It must must have... I'm out of buttons, Kevin Jover. What are you doing? What are you doing? Five more gift subs from Kevin Jover and five more from Grandpa's iPad. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You guys are actually crazy. 310% hype train. Welcome to Hermit1 at two months, Kaisuke FD at three months, Journey in AI at four months, Haplo Eco, Josh Finney at four months, QWERTY Sphere, Zogoth, Evit1337, Oscar Rowan at three months, and Into Unknown. Welcome to Subdim, and thank you, Grandpa's iPad and Kevin Stroberg, for, for your gifts. <clears throat> oh man, I'm really gonna have to get some water after reading all these names. <laughs> uh, oh, I got a level five hype train emote with Hype Scream. That is, that is one that I will probably be using. It looks like, it looks like a angry corgi. <clears throat> that was my gift money from next Mother's Day. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> uh, this is pretty good without any boobs. Well, Drunk Time Lord, you know... <sighs> I'm approaching that, so... I don't know, I need to... I need to lose some weight, but... Okay, so, drama. Wanna start with drama? Drama, drama, drama? I know y'all love drama. So, today's drama is about... Import Lib Metadata. And how I am slightly salty about the breaking changes that are going into 3.10. Because there's not a good way to write the code that doesn't cause deprecation warnings in multiple versions of... Pi oh, yeah, we can do that one too, RKJ. I forgot about that one. Well, let's do that one. That one's quicker and easier. Where's that damn link? Do, 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 do. Where is it? There's oh, here. Here we go. So I opened this issue like two years ago um, on black. And I was like, hey, it would be cool if you had a different emoji sequence than sparkle, pig, sparkle cake sparkle. Um, that's because I don't want to associate black with Kenneth Reeds. That's the entire reason why. And this dude jumps in here and is like, that's completely unnecessary, rude, and subtweeting alike. You should just close this issue. <laughs> This here, this issue here is a violation of COC, Code of Conduct. This is inappropriate, and the time to reaction is also inappropriate. <laughs> Alright, dude. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? 
Looks like they work on something called PyTest that is not PyTest. Makito. Hmm. Anyway. <clears throat> that's that's the first thing. That's the first thing. Oh my god, so much chat. Um that's nothing compared to what I've seen on Twitch, but 300% is still very good. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some bigger ones, but I'm thoroughly impressed that you guys got to 300%. That's crazy. Uh Crazy Mank says, Whoa, good keyboard. Yeah, if you want to learn more about the keyboard, you can do Bang Keyboard and learn more about this. Um this is the blah, 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 blah. Kinesis Freestyle Pro. Uh, Kevin Shark says, oh, you don't get, you don't all get nudes from Anthony on OnlyFans? I mean, you could for the low, low, no. <laughs> yeah, Python 3.10 is coming out next. Um, it's currently, t currently in beta at the moment and we'll be landing later this year. What about Python 4? Python 4 is not going to happen for a while. Um, because it's going to break a lot of code uh, just for, for, by by um, just by changing the version number because there's all sorts of things that there's all sorts of patterns that are broken for that version number thing. Uh, Python 4.20, yeah, there you go, bitchin. Burning Guido, Python will not reach Python 4 before 3.33. Is, is that quoted somewhere? I haven't seen that anywhere. Age platypus. Thank you for the resub with Prime at two months. More indirect support for Flakegate. Appreciate your continued support. Yes, I do work on Flakegate. And that's actually most of the motivation for my grumblings about import the metadata, which we're about to get to. Uh, Hin says, did I get the IRC right? I did. Oh, are you connected to Twitch over IRC? That's cool. That's cool. Uh, light theme on Twitter, hearsay? Yeah, Mrs. Q. I am, yeah, I'm... I don't really like Twitter's dark theme. I don't like GitHub's dark theme either. I know I'm wrong, but whatever. What's the T with Kenneth? Did he do something I missed? Uh, Kenneth T. Yeah, that's that's what I want to search for. Um, so I would start with this article, and this this just barely scratches the surface. This is mostly what people have talked about publicly about Kenneth, but there's a whole lot of other stuff that has gone on beyond behind the scenes. Um, and in personal conversations that people have not gone public with, um, some of which I am privy to, but I am not going to share all of that with you. Um, but read that article. It's a good starting point as to, you know, why Kenneth is not somebody that I would want to associate with or, you know, integrate with or support or et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> um, I thought they were going to release it later this year. Yeah, 3.10 will come out later this year, the final version. Uh, Nirum, hello, hello, how come every time a stream I start to watch starts, three other people start as well and I can't decide, oh no. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Jethro, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome. Jammer, hello, hello. I say we do some lead code problems. We did do, we actually did some last night, which was kind of fun. We did, um, what is it called, binary search, which is a cool little program that my friend actually created, which is, which is neat. Um... But yeah, we did we did some of that yesterday, which was cool. Um, oh, I see you have your own ZNC bouncer. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, what's up, Steve Bandito? Hello, hello. What does that keypad in your split keyboard do? If you do bang keyboard three, you can learn more about this. I use it as a little macro pad so that I can switch my OBS scenes easily, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> Kevin Schoberg says, I can't believe it took me this long to realize Bash does not support searching history forward you have to disable flow control oh i don't think i've ever tried to do that i'm not sure huh bitch it says speaking of troll code i got bored the other evening so i made a flutter app to let you manually mine bitcoin by guessing a nonce oh no <laughs> that's funny bastion shadow vic thank you for the f or, but welcome back why well, thank you for the f i'm just blah. <laughs> just um autopiloting my words there um, but yeah, the um, the long and the short of this is import the metadata has changed the base types that it returns in two of the API methods that basically every plugin system that's using import the metadata uses. And one of those goes from being a plain dictionary, which has a bunch of APIs and, and nice methods, to a tuple subclass that pretends to be a dictionary 
but raises errors on uh, or raises deprecation warnings on every method that gets accessed and changes index lookup from being O1 to being ON. So not only is it much slower than the previous code, but it's, you know, it's incompatible with anything that takes a dictionary. It's also incompatible with anything that takes a tuple because of the way that it overrides the methods on the class. The other thing is one of the internal methods used to return a list, and now it returns a tuple subclass that doesn't act like a tuple and it doesn't act like a list. So any code that was depending on being a list is also broken. And so I made this, you know, this issue that was like, hey, here's a demonstrated breaking change. Um, and here's a bunch of stuff that like, you know, I think should be changed. Cha I think should be reverted because it doesn't fall in line with Python's backward compatibility policy, which states things like, you know, discuss the change and, you know, pepper similar documents or, you know, add a warning, uh, you know, take two rounds of, of changing it before breaking the behavior. Um, yeah, two minor versions before breaking the behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, basically went, went into detail about like, <laughs> you know, this is, this is a pretty ubiquitous library in Python and it's affecting some very important Python packages like Flake 8, Richland, PyTest, Pandas, et cetera, et cetera. What was the reason behind the change in the first place? <laughs> yeah, here's, here's the funny part. The reason behind this, this change in the first place is actually something that I pointed out way back in Python 3.8, which I was like, this is a bad idea and this is going to bite you in the future. And sure enough, it did bite in the future. And, and this is this is the unnecessary response to that, that change here. And the, and the reason for that is... 3.8, I can show you the code, pydoc import lib dot metadata. We look at the code here and look at iterator. Yeah, so this this function right here, this is the entire reason for the change. Um, and the reason, so this violates the substitutability for name tuple, which is what this is up here. Not the code style is, is something else. Um, this this violates the substitutability of tuple, and this was actually breaking PyPy and uh, pickling, which is necessary to pass these objects from uh, one process to another, which is how Flake 8 does its you know multiprocessing work. Um, and that's how the multiprocessing module does its multiprocessing work. Um, and so I was like, hey, this you know this is really awkward and really hard to to deal with. It it would be nice if iter was not overridden and you made another way to do this. And, you know, four, four years later, three years later, um, someone else pointed out the same thing and was like, hey, MyPy doesn't like this. And sure as shit, like, MyPy is like, what are you doing? This this is <laughs> this is completely garbage iter implementation and, you know, violates how a tuple works. And um, so instead of, you know, fixing this method and, and undoing that, um, the maintainer went through and redid every single type and changed every single type. In the API, when in reality, all you really need is a dictionary comprehension that uses self.name and self. Um, and in fact, like the the PR that alerted the maintainer to this did that, did just that. They used they used a dictionary comprehension, which solved the problem perfectly. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not happy about the changing in types because it means that I I have to change a bunch of code, and I'm going to continually get issues until the end of time about people using the wrong version of import the metadata in Flake 8 and, you know, receiving these warnings or errors. Um, and the standard library is usually much, much stricter about making breaking changes here. And this seems really, really aggressively breaking and for no benefit or maybe tiny minor benefit. Um, but yeah, it all comes down to this iter method here. But yeah, that's that's that, which is which is really annoying. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Kevin job exercise is so convenient. I can't count how often I've searched for something using Control R, realizing I passed it. Need to restart the search. Oh, oh, yeah. I have also run into that same problem. I usually just Control C and do it again. <laughs> um, Control S does that. Interesting. Hey, what's up, Bagel? Hello, hello. <clears throat> Bastion says, I saw this thread that Jason guy doesn't make perfect sense. Yeah, also, like, his responses to a lot of the comments are 
directly contradicting other responses that he has said about the same thing. Um, oh, do do you have the updated three point three three quote? Oh God, this is a quite quite the link. <laughs> Guido's face. Um. Oh, this is new. Okay, cool. This is new. It used to be that, like, he used to say that, like, 4.0 would be just another 3x release. Um, but at least it's updated to this. That's cool. Cool, cool. Nice, nice. Um, why was it changed to a tuple subclass? I have no idea, Veranos. <laughs> the tuple subclass makes no sense to me. It seems, like, intentionally cute for not a good reason. Um, but, yeah. Hey, what's up, James Boyan? Hello, hello. Swordchild, good to see you. How's it going? Juicebox Hero, hello, hello. Marco Gorelli, good to see you as well. Uh, I reviewed your change last PR. Um, if Michaela joins, if Marsh, Marsha joins, what's her bonk name? Uh, I don't know, it's hard to... Marsh, Marsh bonk? Marsh bonk. Marsh bonk. I think that one's good. Okay, I actually have to fill up my water because I forgot to do it before stream. And I'm going to lose my voice if I don't do it. So I will be right back, and I will see you in a bit. All right, we're back. And um, here's here's water, just to prove. Marsha Bonks, yeah, there you go. Bonk time, Lord. I like that. Okay, but anyway, let's um let's get started with showing what progress I made last time. Oh, and I, I guess I followed up by asking this the steering console of Python to say like, you know, it would be nice if this could be clarified and and have. You know, some some concrete answer. I'll let I'll let you guys read this. I'm not gonna read this out. Also, I'm real sad that I was off by one here. <laughs> I was so close, yet so far away. Um, okay, but this is what we tried doing last time, and basically basically hit a wall on setting up GitHub Actions tests for this. Um, it's fairly you know fairly easy. Like the the code that I wrote here is fairly easy, um, but I basically need to adjust how the tests work so that it's less problematic. Because right now the tests import all the AWS code and <clears throat> and that uh, import all the AWS code and that is uh, problematic at runtime because I don't have AWS cred set up in CI. I don't really want to either. But yeah. Um, Jam says, do any of you guys have any good resources to practice for a technical interview besides Leet's code? Leet code? Oh my god, I have hiccups today. Go away. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really practice for interviews. Um, but, I don't know, build stuff? Almost nice, yeah, exactly. Kevin Strober says, yeah, that's how I've done in the past. CS is way more ergonomic, though. But as I said, you're going to have to do STTY IXON to make it happen, since CS is used for flow control. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> Did you use asyncio.stream when programming? Anthony writes code bot. Well, I don't know. Uh, Gets grab stream. Stream writer and stream reader, but not stream. Uh, potentially there are streams that are being read and written? Question mark? I'm not sure. Um, I find Leakhead is by far the best. If you need a list of questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Juicebox Hero says, Anthbog, what is your call to emerald rate for Fishy Man? Well, Fish Fishy Man was, I think, two emeralds or two two coal to one emerald. Uh, but Fishy Man 2 is not as good as Fishy Man 1. So it's four or five, depending on how happy he is, which is um, not great. Fishy Man 1 was the reload G, but I don't remember why he died. But he died, um, sadly. <clears throat> Comes Shark says, Boo, did I scare you? Yeah, hiccups are gone now. Wait, Black Box, you've never seen a staff badge? But Juice Box here is. Juice Box Heroes here all the time. Um, You've been wasting coal? What have you been spending coal on? Fishy Man's, Fishy Man's where it's at. Um, okay. But let's set up how I think I should be able to test this. So I, I think what I need to do is be able to reproduce the CI failures. And unfortunately, right now, I have AWS cred set up. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, let me show you the failure. I think I'm going to do is set up a Docker container that looks like GitHub Actions and then iterate on that until things work. Yeah, as you can see here, we're getting this Bodo regions. And that's coming from an import from the, wet, the AWS creds, which comes from the interface. So I think I have to redo how my interface stuff is set up, uh, which is going to be interesting to keep it type safe. I don't quite know how that's going to work. Because uh, it's, ty it's type safe right now because everything is imported all the time. And I got to figure out a um different thing she says you have a fishy man discount because you saved him yeah that's true that's true um and i think if i saved him again he would have a bigger discount the thing is i don't remember how to allow them to die and not oh i think that's why fishy man one died i think i was trying to double save him so it would be one 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 to one um and he died when i was trying to convert him because it's a probability and not a guarantee yeah, I, I, th I think that's what happened. Um, but yeah, we're talking about Minecraft, by the way, chat. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Uh, we're just going to make a Docker file from run to focal run. App get update, app get install, why no? Install recommends. Of course, it's off screen, but whatever. You don't really need to see it. Python 3 and curl and anything else? Mm, probably not. Git? Probably git? Eh. I don't know if we need to get. Let's just start with this. App git. Uh, actually, I don't have to do that. RMRFR lib app list star. And then copy dot to source. And um, should probably want. I use Python 3 VM just because I'm lazy. Um, And we can install that, and then actually we can do copy requirements star.txt to source, and then run Python 3, well, path equals VM on the path. Dash R source requirements dev dot text. Should probably just do this up here. And that should get us some amount of Docker image. We don't even need to copy that in because we can just do bind mounting. Docker build dash t built. Let's do that. Oh man. 
Jam has requested that I switch keyboards. All right, we can do that. We can do that, chat. I feel like I should start with the other keyboard. That way you switch into the this one sometimes. So I feel like what we end up with is I use the other keyboard the whole stream. Which um, is fine, because I do like the other keyboard. But <laughs> it would be, it'd be fucking jokes if I used my like shitty Logitech keyboard. <laughs> But no, we'll, we'll use the we'll use the nice keyboard. Uh, Drunk Diamond says the Python people asked me to write a presentation for the talk. I'm already working on it. Oh, cool. What is your talk about? I missed the original context. Cause I lost attention. My bad. All right. Do do do. We've got our other keyboard now. Um, a quick. Brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. There we go. Cool. All right, so we have our Docker image. Docker run RMTI test v read only bash. Uh, oops, right somewhere. Okay. So this should be roughly equivalent to what ci looks like why is this so slow perhaps because it's timing out hmm. yeah that took like forever to time out for some reason <laughs> like i don't know why that took 10 seconds to time out okay yeah but these are this is the same error that we're seeing before so we have we have something to iterate on which is good uh eagle says any good tips or resources on how to write good unit slash integration tests hmm Hmm. I think I don't know. I feel like it's not easy to write good tests. <laughs> and it's not something you can just learn, I think either. Like you can get a lot of advice by reading articles and such. Um but I think like the best way to learn how to write better tests is to write tests and have other people critique them or learn a style that works well for you and move on that, I guess. Blackbox says, so if somebody has a staff badge, is that automatic mod and turbo status? I believe it grants mod, but I think I think Juice pays for her own turbo. Um, Kevin Joberg says, I need a tool for pasting code that supports syntax highlighting without exposing what language it is. Without exposing what language it is. Uh, I mean, Fluffy guesses at languages, if that's what you're asking. P uh, uh, Pigments guesses at languages too. It's not great, but um, it works, I guess. Uh, Jam says, can you somehow use your phone keyboard for the rest of the stream? No, there's no way. I, I don't even like using my phone just to use my phone. I, I really don't like it. On Path to Pythonic, I'm trying to make it a resource for people coming into Python from some other language, like Java, and it'll explore Python features that all people should know Massively improved readability. Oh, cool. Um, Sullivan says 100% coverage, def test main, main. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She says, I can mod myself in times of need, but we don't auto have mod powers. Yeah, okay, well, you can escalate to mod powers, which is basically the same as mod powers, right? Okay, so let's show the core of the problem. Core of the problem is these imports right here. Um, basically, what I need to do, I think, is move these types to a separate place. And ideally, <laughs> ideally, one day this MyPy issue will be solved, and then I won't have this problem. Um, yeah, allow using modules as subtypes of protocols. This would be so fucking sick if this were implemented. Um, but I don't even know where to start on like trying to contribute something like this because, um, yeah, it would be really, it would be really, really nice to have, to have this. Um, how I'd fucking like pay somebody to implement this. Like that's how much I want this. Swag Kitty 69. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, since I'm back class, the hundred gave nine years old. Oh, nice. Kevin Jobrick says I use Fluffy. Apparently, it's Python code. Uh, anyways, this is what I'm doing this evening. Take a guess at the language. 
Oh, fluffy, fluffy guesses Python. Um. Oh God, what? What is this? What? This feels like Haskell somehow. But like, I don't know me a Haskell. It could also be. Well, it's definitely not Python. <laughs> what is this? This is an implementation of, of Max. Over a sequence, it looks like. <clears throat> but implemented recursively? I have no idea. What is this? What is this? It's Elixir? Oh! Cool. Does Fluffy have Elixir? No. Uh, perhaps because... Um, Perhaps because Pigments does not have Elixir. Interesting. That's cool. Hey, what's up, Priox? Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh, nee says, any idea how to track why time.sleep5 raises keyboard interrupt? Uh, perhaps because somebody typed control C in the middle of it? That would be the only reason sleep would raise a keyboard interrupt. Because uh, time dead sleep is interruptible sleep. There is an uninterruptible sleep, but I don't think it's exposed to Python. Uninterruptible sleep. It's usually not a good idea. Uh, uninterruptible. Seems like it mostly enters that state during bugs. Um, although, I have a story about... <laughs> it raises only once? I have a wild true loop. No touching the keyboard. That seems suspect. It, it should not do that. I have code that does that, and it does not do that. Do you have some sort of daemon that's like watching for processes or some weirdness? Because like, it's like, uh, 5.0 is specifically what you had? Because this will just, you know, sleep forever every five seconds like it's not going to raise keyboard interrupt unless i do control c like that's that's the only case that i would see a keyboard interrupt there um i'm i'm confused uh actually using p open getting a task from q and then it sleeps five seconds between checking if there's another task is it possible that some other process is sending sigint to your um, to your process? Because that that would potentially do that. Um, that's where that's where keyword interrupt comes from. It's from sigint. Uh, I guess George says, I'm honestly having so much fun with it. It's a functional language, but not purely functional. Uh, I think Haskell, so it's actually useful. Nice, interesting. Yeah, my friend was like super into Elixir. I didn't try it though. <laughs> I wasn't, I, I did, did not have enough time to try something like that. Okay, so I think what I need to do, um, so the way this works right now is we select these inter interfaces based on these dictionaries here. And I think instead what I need to do is move these types to some other place and then have the, um, have these get exposed nicely? I don't know. EU friendly stream in D&D S1Q. 
Uh, it might be because it's calling another exe app. So I will do some research in that direction. Yeah, I would look for things. Oh, this is on Windows also. And Windows things are a little bit different. Because um, Windows doesn't have true signaling. There is something that's similar to keyboard interrupt on Windows. Um, I forget. Let's see. Keyboard in interrupt Windows. Um, Python. Hmm. I seem to remember that keyboard interrupt is weird on Windows. And signal joining is weird on Windows. There is there isn't signaling. There is like something that's similar to keyboard interrupt, um, which is like Control Z on Windows. But I don't remember specifically. Windows does Windows, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think what I think my plan for this is to move to move the implementations out to a separate. Let's 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 start by doing this. Move web iface to web iface types, and then in here we're going to remove these imports, and then we're going to remove all of these wiktionaries. And I am going to lose some type safety by doing this, but I think the testability is worth it. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then in web iface, uh, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, then I think, think in web impl what I'm going to do here is do from web.iface types import all of these different types so we need queuing we need pub sub we need av store we need creds. That's it. Okay. This is the AWS one, so we're just going to do this, and I'll reindent in a bit. Um. We need Q. Queuing equals this. And from this, we need to also import this. Actually. From web.impl.abs import creds as abs cred. Oh, I can just copy these imports from up here. So, yeah. And then let's do uh, I made a file called if. Local I face. My house just made a very strange noise. I don't know what that's about. Okay, and then I think what I can do is get rid of most of this and then say. If os dot environ if if 
if if is equal to a to yes, then do from web dot impl dot a to yes dot i face import creds. Oops. Oh god. Creds KB store pumps up QA. Creds KB store. Up some queuing. I'm doing this to avoid F four oh one. And so this is where this is where the soundness falls apart <laughs> a little bit. Because um Yeah, like I could make a mistake in one of these lines that would break the um, the facade that I've made here, or I can have a programming error at the model scope in one of these that goes uncaught until it gets to staging. So that that's like the the unfortunate decrease in in nice things here. Um, but I think uh, can I import name pub sub? From local i face. Oh, did I call it pub underscore sub? What did I call it before? Yeah, no underscore. Okay, so this is where we get to credentials failures. Okay, this is what I wanted to get to. I think this is gonna be good. Hey, what's up, Sandbox? Hello, hello. Emma says, that looks magical when you do control K, lines disappear one by one, but then you paste them all at once. What if you accidentally did control K for one extra line? Can you remove it from the buffer? No, so if I did like, you know, this, and then I accidentally did an extra line, what I usually do is go back and recut the, the lines that I care about. It's not perfect, but it works well enough, I guess. James Wayne says, by the way, Anthong, what do you think of the Rust import system considering they use curly braces for multiple imports inline always? Uh, I don't know. I have not worked with Rust. Um, it sounds like you would get really, really long lines and have problems. Also, you would have no way to avoid merge conflicts in those. But then again, Rust is compiled, so you're going to have more merge conflicts from types anyway, I think. Um, and at least compile the compiler's going to help you there. Uh, hey, what's up, Yarov? Hello, hello. Good to see you again. And Joe LaFarcy. Hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, I have a Docker cron question. Mind helping me? Sure, I mean, feel free to ask. We'll see if I'll be able to help you. Um, yeah. Depends on which tech it deals with, but yeah, feel free, feel free to ask. Silly Bun says this hangover is unbearable. Time to break out the vodka. Can't deal. <laughs> yes, the the perfect way to solving hangovers is to drink more. Uh, okay, so I think the way to make this more reliable is to make a pytest fixture which stubs out the credentials during testing. Pytest a fixture auto use equals true. Um, stub creds. We also need to do web i face web no web impl local creds. And I think this is the function that I need to stub with let's see from web dot impl dot local dot Local import creds with mock.patch.objects. Oh, is this going to work? Or is this going to be too late? I wonder if this is going to be too late. It might be too late. Because <sighs> it's a module scope. Well, we'll find out. And contents. Turn value equals. So let's just start with this. See if that gets us a different error. Uh, it does not. Because uh, module scope. 
Well, that's annoying. How can I fix this? I could make a third implementation of <laughs> the local. Um, actually, it might be fine to just, it might be fine to just stub this out during test. Oh, I don't even know. If I just do make their local, well, we could set up. Kind of want the test to not be dependent on the file system state. Though it might be easier to do it that way. Well, I don't know. No, I don't know. Don't ask to ask. Just ask the question. D and D drunk time lord. Hey, what's up, Pythonic Pie? Hello, hello. Uh, you do your questions. Don't taste beer questions. Hey, there you go. Um. Drink water. Yeah, I'm out of water. I gotta drink some more. Uh, that was my Q PRP. <laughs> nice. Except the other Q. C U E. Um. Yom says, didn't want to interrupt. No, feel free to ask. It's all good. Jason says, I mean, Rust doesn't really give a crap about line length. The default of Rust format is 100. I see. Hey, what's up, Adrian? Hello, hello. So I'm using 120. Interesting. Yo says, the basic question is, I'm using cron and Debian with Docker, but the cron does not take my environment variables. Any help how to inject those environment variables to the cron? So, are you saying, because like the, the uh, cron tab dash e, oh, I don't have anything in mind. <laughs> um, so typically when cron runs a process, it runs it without any environment variables. You can set environment variables in this cron file, I don't remember the syntax. What I, I usually cheat though, and one, two, three, four, five. I usually cheat and do m foo equals bar baz equals womp, you know, and set my environment variables using env, um, just because it means that the, they aren't global to the whole cron tab. And I know this works without having to figure out the weird cron syntax for this. Um, but again, you can see I have no cron tabs here. <laughs> so I do do that all, all that often. Um, your other option is use systemd services, but I don't. you probably don't want to do that. Uh, but there is a syntax for environment variables here. The other thing that's tricky is passing those environment variables into Docker, um, partially because this is not a shell here, so you can't really use shell constructs, but you can do something like this, where you do bash dash C and then, you know, Docker run env you know, foo equals dollar sign foo, and that'll allow you to pass along environment variables into things by forcing this to be a shell. Actually, cron is a shell, isn't it? I can never remember. Cron might or might not be a shell. Um, but you could use this to pass along variables. I know this will work independent of it being a shell. But this might be an extra bash wrapping for no reason. Um, does that answer your question? I feel like. <laughs> It might, it might not. Uh, XN. Dizzy Sufi says, I decided to learn coding about a month ago, learning Python. Nice. Well, welcome to the stream. Hopefully, hopefully you're doing well. Word to Vect. Thank you for the follow. I saw you here on the last stream, but thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, usually you let cron run a script and those can pick up the end variables. Yeah, that's another a good idea. Dizzy Sufi says, I don't understand anything just in consumption mode. Well, that's a good mode to be in. I'm still in consumption mode, and I've been doing this for <laughs> too many years. <laughs> um, Forsen! Oh my god, it's been a long time. Welcome back, buddy. That's a lot of buttons I've done. Yeah, we had a lot of gift subs already. It's been, it's been a wild stream so far. What happened to your keyboard? Somebody redeemed the channel points, and it switched. Um, yeah. Uh, Mentionix, welcome back. Just to find the environment variables for the cron job line, like lang equals. Oh, cool, cool. I didn't know that was a thing. Nice. Uh, I guess you could do man cron tab, and it probably tells you that there somewhere. Environment variables. Uh, I probably named man cron tab five. I don't. I, <laughs> is it man five cron tab? I can never remember. Yeah, there we go. Uh, in 
environment. Uh, an active line in a cron tab will either be an environment variable setting or a cron command. Cron tab file, sparse from top to bottom. Any environment settings will only affect cron commands below them. Okay, so you could do name equals value note with spaces around it. Uh, and it does not expand or do substitutions. Alexa McCann! Thank you for the resub with Prime at six months. Many happy returns. Welcome back. It's good to see you. I don't know why TTS is not working. Here. You gonna work this time? I feel like it's 50 50 today. No, it didn't work that time either. Well, many happy returns to you as well. It's good to see you. Uh, maybe my TTS settings got changed in Streamlabs. I don't know how to do those though. Oh god, there's so many things. Settings? No, it's account settings. <sighs> not what I want. Alert box? Let's see. Profanity filter is disabled. There is a standard bad word list, but... Mm, I don't know. Descriptions. That's the same settings. I don't know. I don't know. Um... <clears throat> IPTTS, yeah. The TTS doesn't work exactly, Drunk Time Lord. Uh, hey, what's up, Zia1 Natsu? Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, what was I doing? What was I deciding on here? I don't think I remember what I was doing. I know this, this is a problem. Uh, we can ignore these warnings. Those won't happen in CI. I <laughs> that they happen so often, though. Um, but yeah, I have to decide, um, because, like, if I change this to not error, then that'll be, that'll be okay. The other thing is, like, I could try and eliminate my module scope stuff here. But that seems hard. So like the problem is I'm building this key directly at import time, which is bad. This is this is a problem. Um how do I factor that out though? And I don't think anything else I think this is a unique problem to this particular sub app. So yeah. Jeff says the issue is that the Docker command is cron to oh, you're running cron in the Docker. The, do the environment variables are coming from Docker Compose. Is cron running in the foreground? I guess cron probably doesn't inherit its environment variables. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. Let's see. Cron foreground inherit environment. This looks like exactly the same problem. <laughs> It looks like you could make your startup script do this. That's the environment seems like a little bit of a hack, but Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to use the Etsy environment, the other idea is you write out an M file at startup and then source that in your cron scripts. Um, or you write your environment to the beginning of your cron script on startup. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Or you do this command, which seems... I, I didn't know you could pipe into source. I guess it makes an anonymous, it makes a named pipe. Huh. This one's clever, but super hacky. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what this does is it takes the input from proc1 environment, which is null delimited, 
and environment variables. And then it um, reformats that to printf the, an export line. I, I think bash dash C is actually unnecessary here. I think you can just do this directly with um, echo or echo dash dash replace. Um, and then it sources it. <laughs> anyway, there's there's a few, uh, let me just, I guess I'll send you that link so that you can um, look at some of those solutions. Because I think they also apply some of the other stuff as well. Hey, what's up, Marsman? Hello, hello. Raisins has just joined. It's weird to not see the split keyboard. Yeah, somebody spent the points and we swapped. We swapped. Senbuzz says, do you use any Python dev debug flags often? Are they useful? Uh, I don't. I don't use them very often. The one exception is uh, the import time setting. Uh, although I don't use it directly, I usually use it through import time waterfall. What is the pull request here? Oh, yeah. And then I'm probably not going to merge. <laughs> this is the one that I use to generate these, I think. That's the only one, basically. Hey, what's up, Jug Mac? Hello, hello. Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, okay, so let's try and make this Flask app lazily instantiated instead of eagerly instantiated. How are we going to do that? Um, I think maybe I have to refactor these all out into... I mean, I should probably split this file up anyway because it's a thousand lines long. Um... Problem is, I think this needs to happen at the model scope anyway. Well, I can make a class. Yeah, we can. You can do some clever stuff with classes and lazy properties and call. Yeah, let's do that. I think we have to split up. We're gonna split up the class cap. We're gonna do blueprints. Uh, you don't use the old browser here, <laughs> right? Right. Time it says, do you know if I can make my own custom zxpy shell thing to use Python history file automatically? Apparently, I can read the file using readline and append to it on exit, but I wonder if I can automatically do that. Uh, so the REPL actually has special code for this. Where does that code live? I contributed to it. I should remember where it lives. So my PRs. I fixed a uh, crash in it um, in Docker. Mm. Oh man, this is such a good change. I can love this change. I'm proud about that. Mm. Um, I thought we would have found it by now. There we go. Ignore error writing history with no home directory. This lives in libsite. <laughs> That's going to tell me that the answer is probably no. Yeah, so it goes through an add exit handler. Yeah, so this is, this is how it does it. So you would need to do something similar. Yay, Python app architecture. I struggle with that a lot. Yeah, well, this is the easy way to do it. So now we're, now we're going to split this up. Okay. So, maker web blueprints.py. No, directory. I would make a .py file. Yeah, that would, that would be dumb. Um, okay, touch. Init.py. To do all of this lazily, which is really annoying.
we don't have to do it all easily. We just have to do... We just have to do... Maybe we don't reorganize. Yeah, we just have to do this. Actually... Okay, we have to do both of those things. <sighs> but then we need this. That makes a cycle. Um, CSRF exams. Uh, I think this is the one we're using. Hello. <laughs> well, that was not what I wanted. Yeah, it's annoying that you need that kind of global object to do this. Um, Robinson, Robinson Shy, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, check next says from the diff documentation, lines beginning with a question mark attempt to guide the eye to inch align differences and were not present in either input sequence. These lines can be confusing. <laughs> well, the the question mark used to not print at the put point at the right positions because of tabs, so I fixed it. Tessa used hello hello welcome to the stream Pollux how's it going good to see you again. Um, yeah, this is kind of annoying. This is kind of annoying. Um... Like I can do all the imports lazily. That part's not hard. It's just like... Make cycles too. How's this? <laughs> I don't. I don't see how this is supposed to work without doing this eagerly or at the model scope. Uh, flask WTF lazily instantiate ins. Oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. Why did their docs solve 404? <sighs> okay, so this is, oh, you can make this separately. Oh, okay. That's, that I understand now. I understand now. Okay. So, let's do that then. Um, read app. Uh, def or csref equals flask wtf dot csref dot csrf protect. And then we can do uh, 
Oh. We wanted to import all the blueprints in here as well, but that's going to cause a cycle. Um, so I might move this something. Uh, then we need to do app called secret key equals credstockflask. What did I do here? Use our dot init app. Okay. Kevin says, am I complicating things here? Let's see. <clears> hmm. <throat> this is a Caesar cipher, I assume? Uh, it seems fine. It seems about how I would do this. Seems simple. How do you? How's your? There's like three forms of Caesar cipher. Uh, what is your? Where's your key? <laughs> this is a bigger question. Or is your key just n? I guess your key is just. This is just a modular. Caesar cipher. And so rot 13 would be Caesar of N, Caesar of 13. I guess that works. Cool. Yeah, this seems fine. Seems easy. Um, this is going to reach care code Z plus one. It should fall back to A65 again. Yeah, that seems right. Seems right to me. Alex says, I cycled back to Mint again. I thought today would be a nice day and I want to change, so I installed Elementary OS after working with Mint for two years. Didn't really, I didn't really, you know, feel like it was polished enough, so I tried Ubuntu. And that felt like it was too much bloatware, and now I'm back to Mint again. My whole day was installing just trust. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I use the minimal install of Ubuntu, and it works pretty well, for me at least. Senpa says, I saw people move such extension instances to a separate module, like extensions, and just import them. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. That's probably what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. And I can do from web dot app. I'm going to call it app extensions. And then we can do from web blueprints import. Now we can start moving some of these things over. Uh, and then what is it? Register blueprint. So let's do the first blueprint. When blueprints static.py. How do I make a blueprint? There we go. I don't need this. This one normal blueprint. They don't need to have, I think I can just call blueprints with this double under name. I don't think I need a tablet folder. Ornislaw, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, equals flash dot blue blueprint. I don't like that string. We could probably use name dot split dot eight one. Let's do the same thing. That's no, off screen. Well, huh? 
Surprised I don't inline that. Uh, okay, so this would be static dot round and static dot round. And is this going to resolve from the right directory? We'll find out. This actually needs to be dot static, import static. Okay, and then we just start doing more of these web blueprints index. That is going to do import flask. That seems really annoying. That seems like it should be the default. Name and import name. If dot in name, name may not contain a dot character. Yeah, so you must pass a string here. That's actually really annoying. It would be really nice if it just automatically did what I'm doing. <laughs> oh well. Um. Mint is like Windows of Linux. Interesting. Um, Cutter says Arch, by the way. Nah, JK, use WSL like a pleb. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jacob? Hello, hello. Uh, Kevin says, more specifically, I thought there was a better way of implementing the wrapping with mod. Oh, you could subtract down to zero and then mod and then add back. So subtract A, mod, add A. Um, that would work. But yeah. Hey, what's up, Hooligan? Hello, hello. What is your code? Um, you can do bang today, learn about what I'm working on. Yoff says, how many babbies do I need in order to make you move back to split keyboard? Uh, I forget how many points I made it, but it looks like 20, 20,000. So I'm, I'm making, I'm making it sufficiently expensive to switch keyboards. Rastafarian, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, if you spend that 20k, I'll switch back. <laughs> You probably have that many points too. You've been around for a long time. Okay, so next is the these two routes, which are actually the same but slightly different. Oh shit. Okay. So we get rid of those now. And then install a blueprint with one route. <laughs> that seems overkill. <laughs> eh, maybe it's fine. In front, I'll fix it in a bit. Thank you for thank you for that. Because there's there's gonna be all sorts of missing imports. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna need to do as much refactoring on other apps though, or on other robot stories. It's just that this one has particularly bad module scope things. Version um, You give a TLDR for blueprints and flasks the TLDR is blueprints let you split up a flask app into multiple files That's basically it um, Ender says I have 81k points so close to being able to save Anthony's wrists <laughs> Yeah Mm 
version. Oh my god, Juice has redeemed the points to make me switch keyboards. Alright. How many swaps will we do per stream? Fortunately, this keyboard is right here, so we can just be like... Look, now we have the other keyboard! You did it, chat! You made me switch! Easy! Alright, now we're on the other keyboard. Oops. <clears throat> the keyboard was anti-ASMR? I feel like the other keyboard has much better sounds than this one. This is a new thing. I remember implementing my own hacky version years ago. Uh, they've been around for at least six years. Um, doesn't surprise me. No, staff doesn't have infinite points, although Juice t can technically um, refund her own points, but I don't think she would do that. Okay, I'm going to not import any of these private functions just yet. We're just going to move the routes over and then fix the imports after that. Okay, we're going to add this one to... We'll do repo next. And these two endpoints, the new batch token as well as this, are going to go into the same blueprint because they are basically the same endpoint. Last. Oh, this is actually going to suck. I should maybe post fix with something else. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you for the bit, silly buns, but Shevsky has redeemed which keyboard. <laughs> oh, did I not make it expensive enough? Is this is this really a thing? Alright, we'll switch keyboard. I should make like a bits reward so that people can do it instead. Um <clears throat> All right, we're back. We're back to this keyboard. <laughs> <You're on. laughs> Sigmax says, what are your Python dependencies and pre-gen CR except for Flask? Um, not much. So in this one, actually we can just do, uh, all repos grab dot and requirements minimal. And then, oops, F3, let us sort dash you. Those are my requirements. On oh, no. ho thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. So my AWS translation library, photo three for AWS stuff, cryptography for, um, which thing? Where do I use cryptography? Oh yeah, for session encryption. Uh, Flask, Flask, CSRF form thing. Um, this is because of, this is in the runner repo. So this isn't actually part of the app. Uh, this is the CI configuration. This does ANSI coloring for run highlighting. Uh, this is for contacting GitHub, and this is YAML, so not that much. Does your ID have a linter? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, Koro says keep the split one. <laughs> What's the swirly thing? It's literally just a swirly thing. If you do bang blue thing, uh, you can learn more about it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's that. Yeah, I'm thinking now that I don't want to call this um, like this. I think we're going to call this repo blueprint. Um, 
because there's gonna be local variables named repo inside this module. Um, so I'm gonna have to redo all the other ones. Does the first attribute have to match? What does self.name get used for? Oh, it's gonna change all the links. Hmm. Oh, it's like, what if this is empty? It's gonna have an extra dot here. Dot else trip dot. Clever. Sneaky. <sighs> That's annoying. All right, well, we'll have, to, we'll have to go fix those other ones. Okay, so this actually has a lot of code here. Uh, this bit here. And this route here. Oops, yes. Looks more like a paperweight. It's pretty heavy. Um, Chris says, Anthony writes code redeemed to keep the split one. <laughs> oh, you didn't. Oh, wait, you did. Wait, what? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is our new record for keyboard swaps per stream. I, you did, you did, I saw. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth we go. I guess that was the risk of making that a gimmick. Now we're slightly less. There we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Just watch someone else on a team again. <laughs> back, back and forth between keyboards forever. <laughs> okay. Where did the install route go? Did I delete that accidentally? Oh no, I have it right here. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, I gotta rename all these. Install index blueprints. And speaking of which, we have to have you over this is a pretty major refactor oh this one's gonna wrap no no uh, get rid of that there
Oh. Yeah, I don't have something set up about my computer, um, Pari, but I have i7 8700K, I have 6 to 4 gigs of RAM, I have a butt ton of SSDs, and I have a 1080 Ti, and I have three screens. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is, oh, I missed the X. Uh, yeah, I'm on a desktop. So many SSDs, Chia. I'm not plotting Chia. No way in hell. <laughs> what do you mainly use Windows for? Uh, at this point, running virtual machines and browsing the internet. <laughs> so not not all that much. Version blueprint. Version blueprint. Okay, let's grab the repo one. Because we have this. Also, that as well. Okay, now we need the run blueprint. Oh, big refactors today. The other shitty thing is I don't have good test coverage of the actual routes, so we're gonna have to do a lot of clicking through UIs and making sure things still work. Um, oh, there's a typo here. You know, I can do this automatically. find attributes that look like blueprint blueprints. Mm, that seems too magical. 64 gigs for a VM? Uh, no, my VM has, let's see. I have allocated eight gigs to my VM. Grafenborg, hello, hello. Hello streamer, I'm getting a lot of errors when I lynch my code. How do I turn all the errors off? <laughs> <laughs> Griffinborg is trolling Coder. Don't 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 let him get to ya. Uh, bash Okay, so I know this code moves over here also, so we can get rid of that. And technically both of these end up here as well, even though the latest route is maybe not obviously related to um, badges, but it is, it is badges. I'm actually very surprised I have not typed blueprint yet. <laughs> as soon as I say that, it's gonna happen though. Uh, just because for whatever reason, me and typing words that end in int, or just typing int in general, I get blueprinting a lot. Julian, hello, hello. Good to see you. How are you doing? How's your Saturday? I'm doing some overdue refactoring at the moment. Splitting up a flask app from one file to multiple files. The badge blueprint. I should really be working on this screen and not that screen. Uh... Oh, how am I gonna do this? Where am I gonna put this in? Or this thing? I gotta put both of these things in. Hmm, how's that gonna work? How do you do that usually? Oh, lazily.
Hmm. That's not what I wanted. Why did it link me to the bottom of the file? <laughs> there we go. Um. And the templating is going to be all broken. The URLs are going to be all broken. Uh, error handlers. Is this specific to that blueprint? In the blueprint. Okay. Got it. Uh, Daisuke, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you're doing well. Not too bad here, fighting with things, so I'd prefer and come and watch you fight with things instead. <laughs> yeah, indeed. There's a second decorator for app wide. Yeah. I figured as much. The problem is like where does this <laughs> if I have a create app function I don't feel like I can I mean I can just call the decorator equivalent. Like I can just put these functions in line. Um Oh, I just realized when I copy and paste from the other file that the long lines got cut off. Oh, I'm going to have to fix that. I think I can just do this instead. Not, it's not great, but um, it'll work, hopefully. Fuck Jinja 2! Uh, Django would be overkill or why flask? Yeah, Django's super overkill. <laughs> I don't really like Django, personally. It's fine. It's just I don't like it. <laughs> um, I distracted myself before I set up this blueprint. Edge blueprint. Oh god! <laughs> Should have done this first. Uh, index whatever done after app request. I follow what you're looking for. Yeah, the thing is I need this in all my views. Any any view that serves a page, so I'm just doing this globally by doing this here. Should work. These are essentially the same as the decorator calls in line. Uh, what's the TLDR on Flask versus Django versus Fast API versus hmm. Um There I mean Fast API and Flask have basically the same design. Django kind of Gives you a lot of stuff, but forces you to do everything in their particular way, which I don't really like. Um, yeah, that's, I guess, the, the, the TLDR. <laughs> um, uh, web blueprints, github.py. This one's going to be a big file. Oh, and I have to fix the badge that are lines too long. And then we gotta do all this stuff. And then we gotta get all of our webhooks.
This one's super long. <laughs> Delete up until the end of that one. I have to delete all this stuff up here. Okay. It's going to be another long method because it's very similar to the other one. Ever so slightly different. Oh my. Yeah, this this file is still going to be kind of monolithic, and that's okay. I can always I can always refactor further later. Don't need to do that to accomplish what I'm trying to get to today. Oh, did I just fuck this? No, we're good. And then we have all the ignored webhooks. <laughs> so that it doesn't error. Okay, and then this is the last route that we need there. And then we needed to do the from web dot app extensions import CSRF, something like that. Okay, we're almost done. We have one more round to do. Uh, and then we have to do all of the annoying refactoring and the imports and the functions and the um, but yeah this is what I was talking about these got cut off because of the uh, way that I did that holy christ those lines are super long um they don't even fit on a screen. Because they're copy paste SVGs. This. Oh, it wraps them too. Oh, damn it, Kit. I gotta do me like that. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna do this. Get show head web handler dot by grab SVG. I are clever. Look. He's fix. He's fix. Why is this dict stir stir? Is it not obvious that this is dict stir stir? Why would this not be Dexter Stir? Why did I type annotate this? Well, let's see what my pie says later. Okay. Dexter, indeed, indeed. Hey, what's up, Color Marku and Leonard SSH? Good to see you both again. Hello, hello. Um. Yeah, Dick Sword, Dexter. Whatever, 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 whatever gets you. Login blueprint equals class dot blueprint name dot split dot negative one name.
Okay. That mostly gets that done. Where did the where does the dict go? <laughs> uh, all right, I gotta go fill my water. I will be right back, and I will see you in a sec. Ah, button. Hello. Man, sometimes it doesn't work, and I don't know why. All right, we are back, and here's the water. Okay, so I think we're almost to the point where we start running the linters and seeing where things go. <sighs> uh, let's start with Flake 8. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's do Let's just start with this. Oh, actually wanted to Okay, yeah, it knows that it's Dexter Stir, so there was no reason for that. Crow, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. What, you weren't following? I feel like I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you weren't following before. I feel like I've seen you before. Although, it might just be that I've seen you in Where's Where's X's channel or someone else's channel. Um, oh, we should do... Actually, this is old from yesterday where we didn't get anything there. actually get reorder our Python imports going first so that we get from future input annotations so that my pie stops being angry about that. All right, and then we have to do this stuff. I was watching without following. Ah, I see. Color Marker says, Anthony, I watched your video about Terraform and I had a question. What do you use to have your Terraform, uh, your Terraform created machines start their worker processes? So I actually don't manage the code part through Terraform. Um, I build my AMI separately, um, but I use systemd and Packer to do that stuff. And I have a video about Packer as well. Uh, but I, I explicitly like don't manage the AMI in Terraform um, so that I can deploy it independently. Alabona, hello, hello. What are you working on today? We are <laughs> doing a massive refactor of, of um, Pregnant CI to 
be more modular and support testing so that I can make a deploy system. We're down a rabbit hole. We're down a very, very deep rabbit hole. Uh, web data repo. That's where repo get comes from? Yeah. Okay, so from web dot data dot repo import repo get web dot iface import secrets from workzog dot wrappers import response go status oh that actually doesn't come from there does it i think this comes from web data batch batch status web data status repo status and latest run Latest run. Oops. Repo name redirect. Hmm. Right, that comes from another <laughs> blueprint. And boy, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. How's that going to work? Web.blueprints.repo import repo name redirect. Okay, then we have to do this file. Web iface has no attributes secrets. What was secret? Oh, it's the standard library secrets. What was that getting used for? Oh, probably comparison. Web blueprints badge. Okay. Now we should get to this. Okay. Web blueprints repo. All these underscore functions are going to be annoying. Um, display URL. I put this above here. I think this should be first. <clears throat> uh, Volkswagen is a hard word to remember. Yeah, it's it's German for work stuff. Whereas it says, Anthony, what do you propose for test XML creation? What do you mean by test XML creation? Uh, Bitch says, just been doing test-driven development. Can't confirm test-driven driven development is a scam. I don't think it's a scam. I think it works really well. Hey, what's up, Wanzi? Yeah, huge refactor, as Senpaz says. Indeed, indeed. I'm now running the linters to help guide me through fixing all of the refactoring I just did. Blue1986, hello, hello. Good evening to you as well. Um... Marcia says, I work on some data input for a system which uses XML, and I do not know how to test it properly. I mean, presumably it takes input as XML and outputs as something, and so you would make some fixture XMLs and um, use those in, under test or something like that, right? Maybe? Oh, a new badge. Okay, that comes from... from... Here, I believe. <laughs> uh, 
And I did flash, flask instead of flash. Updated repo has no attribute, get recent runs. Where does that come from? Update a run. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, now we're down to the. Um, <clears throat> why need to split it into modules if you didn't do it before? Um. For two reasons. One is I need to lazily instantiate my app, uh, and I need to do that so that I can test it. Um, and I need to be able to test it so that I can deploy it automatically. So I'm, tr I'm trying to get more away from manual operations and get to automated operations. Because uh, right now I deploy from my laptop or my desktop, and sometimes I forget which one is which. Drew says, hi hey, Anthbong. Hey, Juicebox Hero. What's up? You mind if we bathe tofu after her hike? Sure, that seems fine. It's fine with me. Doesn't matter with me. Here, we're gonna skip those for a second. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna put all those files yet. Let's uh, let's do run next. Run. Come from somewhere later as well. Matters how much fur you have to clean on your tie. It's fine. It's easy. It's easy. Grateful Tomato says so many badges. Thought three was the limit. Well, staff is a little bit special. Little, a little special. Staff gets a little bit more. Let's do this one next. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna suck. This is most of the output. Is that one? Uh, from web import flash. Um, user. From web .data .session import user. Why is there a capital dict oh okay. Okay. Need, oops get in any All right, we're getting we're getting there. Session put of sub. Is the request type uh, last dot request? Okay. 
Presumably I can just do this. Need HMAC. Uh, Senpai says, gotta go, it's bedtime. Well, thank you for stopping by. Why one import per line? Uh, let's see. Is this the video? Yeah, check out that video. I talked about it. It's not a pep standard. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this is right. But check out check out the video. I talk more about it in there. That'll live now. Reader serializer. Ah. Uh. <laughs> ah. Uh. Hmm. This also eagerly gets the secret key. That's gonna be a problem. <clears throat> Are you switching to Flash 2.0? Uh, Pregnancy Eye is already on Flash 2.0. Already did that. Well then, this is going to be a little annoying. I can make a function. Uh, flask current app. Hmm. Okay, so what we can do instead is my blueprints. This was what input is it? Oh, the auth callback. Yeah. We're going to defer the initialization of this. And use current app.secret key. Not the best, but should work.
don't really like this. I wish there was a slightly less awful way to do this. Blackbox says, gonna head off. Thanks for the stream. Well, thank you for stopping by. I'll do the flask extension. Be less gross. Yeah, we'll leave it out. Just to do... To maybe move... Both of those regexes move. Okay. From web data install import install install repo install put install repos install delete uh doka thank you for the follow welcome to the stream hopefully you're doing well what are the six buttons in the middle before there's actually seven buttons and two Spinning dials, uh, lemmores, and if you do keyboard three, oh, keyboard three, you can learn about it. It's a little macro pad. Tell me you're using Nano instead of Vim. I'm not using Nano, Antet. If you look closely, um, is this Nano? No, it's not Nano. Um, set plan. Web to do that run, 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 create, and queuing. I'll get, let's see, repo. What's this thing? Callable has no attribute route. Indeed it does not. Thank you, my pie. Okay, that mostly gets that one done. Uh, index, let's do index next. And then we'll figure out all those helper functions where they need to go. Of course, I type out blueprint. Nice. Uh, from web .data dot install get all. So that has us mostly down to that now. And I think we're just down to those helper functions. Nope, we didn't do login. Good parse. Web has no treat creds. Indeed, it does not. Okay.
Hey, what's up, Jay Malone? Hello, hello. Okay, that goes away. All right. Um. Okay, I think we're gonna put login URL in here. <laughs> the problem is, I gotta get this reader serializer. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Let's see what a Flask plugin looks like. Um. We can do that. We can actually just do it in line here. Redirect. Last an application? I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Ah. Service stir star return URL stir or none. Ooh, just barely fit in there. Defcon live, hello, hello. Good to see you. had done a 24-hour stream today i could maybe follow it all the way i'm already 18 hours up now. oh my god that's crazy black arrow thank you for the follow welcome welcome uh once he says do you only specify return type if it's not obvious i res i specify it always um that allows me to use the type checker um there are some cases where you can leave it out so for instance double under init which takes more than one parameter the arrow none is optional. Um, I don't think I have any... I literally don't have any classes which define double under in it. Wait, that can't be right. I have one class. Uh, this should have had arrow none because it has a single parameter.
two done. Just when it says best part is only got five hours of sleep. Oh my god. Sounds awful. That sounds awful. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> that gets rid of login URL. Theory. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous, is not defined. Indeed. Last on application is not defined. Is it app? Ha ah, you don't tell me the type. Oh, it's flash type flask, duh. <laughs> of course. Incompatible type union stir bites none. Expected union stir bites. Oh. Um, hey, what's up? I am the heroic. <laughs> Definitely got that wrong. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. What's the ideas behind your module structure? It feels like there are a lot of different ways to do it with Python. So this is specifically Flask blueprints. So I'm organizing based on how people usually do blueprints. Um, and some advice that people in chat gave me. That's That's where I'm basing this on. Oh, that's that's it. Blue, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so those session things are still not solved, but type of this. Okay. So anywhere that we have login URL, we can fix those ones. <clears throat> oh. I wonder if return URL is always this. <laughs> Seems like it always is specified like that. So maybe we don't make it a parameter. Oh, weird. I could have sworn we use this for other things. Maybe not. Yeah, I think we're just gonna make 
I know I shouldn't change so many things at once. This is already a massive patch. Oh, we don't have the app. We could have the app. Mm, let's just we'll not we'll not change too many things. We'll save that. Exactly 80 characters. It's also exactly 80 characters. Which means if I move this one up here, it would also be 80 characters. It will do that. Oh, this stupid thing's to save one tiny line of code. Uh, do you have a YouTube video on how to structure your Python programs? Not really, because it varies a lot depending on what you're doing. Uh, you really just need a Twitch channel with 100 plus viewers to make your module structure? <laughs> yeah, is that how it works? Uh... Okay, so we have sessions, and we have gate repo, and we have GitHub session, and we have logout. So I think those all need to go into a sessions module. I believe. Most of those come from here. Wow, they actually fit exactly on one screen. Look at that. Session put, session revoke, all are not needed. And where does flask get used? Oh, let's see. User. How did I miss user? Somehow. Okay, and then these need to be public. GitHub session, get sessions, log out GitHub. So have to do gate repo. Oh boy. Being good again. James Wayne says, by the way, Anthon, when do babbies become a new currency so we can crush the crypto market? 
Uh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, um. Oh, we're getting closer. <clears throat> uh, Chansium, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. Uh, what are you supposed to be? Log out GitHub. At some point, I will add more PCS systems, but today it's not that day. <sighs> okay. Dollar Babby, yeah. Starting to make crypto 100% renewable in some places. Mm. It's still... It's still not really 100% renewable. Okay, the last thing we need to do is this gate... Re well, not the last thing. The last thing we need to do to make MyPy happy in this particular module. It's gate repo. And then we need to figure out how to lazily make this thing. Shouldn't be too hard. I could even use module get adder. I have never used before, but it seems like it would be really nice here. Uh, maybe it wouldn't be really nice. I don't know. Um, gate repo. Okay. Yeah, this to do would be nice to do at some point. Uh, web data dot session. That where that type lives, hopefully. Uh, Ella, Ella Victor Silva, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well on this fine day. Climb to fail, says Anthemite's code. Did you deploy a Hadoop ecosystem on-premises without using Cloudera before? <sighs> um, well, that's a lot of presumption there. Um, well, I've never used Cloudera, but I've also never deployed Hadoop. So... Vacuously, yes, but also vacuously, no. <laughs> um. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay. This should be green now. But this will not be green. This will be quite angry. Well, less angry than I thought. Hmm. 
from web dot impl dot AWS import creds. Uh oh. This type is wrong too. Where did that move? I face types. Okay, that one is annoying. This handler tests. Are these all regex tests? Yeah, so these can move. Climb to fail. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate that. Sorry I couldn't help you. <laughs> um, now I feel bad. <laughs> Web blueprints GitHub. Is not defined. Okay, we. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> fuck Ginger 2, fuck Ginger 2. I'm typing for any. Okay. Now we're gonna do web handler. Oh man, we're we're almost we're almost good here. We're almost good. Get rid of all of this, I think. Alright, so from web.app import create app. Damage General says, hello, hello, which repo is this? This is pre-commit CI slash web. So it's a private repo. Um, but yeah, create app dot run. Almost good four hours later. Uh, it's only been two and a half hours. Okay, but the tricky part is how do I make this thing um, lazily instantiated? Class handler call. I think this is actually event dict stir stir. And then what's the other argument? Something object. Uh, Uslan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Context, context, object to none. I think this is actually dict or any something like that. Doesn't actually matter because we're just forwarding things along. Um, but did functuals at cache property get added in 3.9 or 3.8? Oh, God, I hope it's 3.9. I hope it's 3.8. God, I feel like it's 3.9. Yes, it's 3.8. <laughs> uh, nice. Okay. Thank goodness.
Um. I think we can do this. Actually, you know what? We can just do. Why don't we want to do this? Oh, because we need to call create app here. Hmm. Yeah, this one's private because uh, it's it's running precommit.ci, which is my startupy thing. But I show you all the code on stream, so it's not like it's secret. It's mostly just like I would like to protect my intellectual property slightly more. <laughs> is this gonna work? It's a hack. <laughs> it's, it's certainly a hack to defer startup as much as possible. A less hacky way to do this. Let's see. Module level get adder. I feel like it's also a hack, but how does it work? All right, so you're supposed to raise attribute error. That might be easier. Oh, then I just go through the lookup over and over and over, and I don't really like that. Hmm. Well, this probably works, so. Just missing a return type. <laughs> what is this supposed to be? I think it returns a handler. Which is not going to be able to know that. My pie isn't going to know that type. Any is not defined. Actually, this can just return object because we don't actually care about the type here. Maybe? None has no attribute run. Uh, that's because I forgot to return the proper type here. All right, my bye, Zappy. Uh, yes or not happy? Does that make sense? Could 
because we weaned them off of the credentials. Whoops. Why did you all error? Attribute error. Oh. <laughs> um. Okay, so test passing. The problem is everything's broken. Uh, things are definitely not working right now. Uh... Okay, the app starts. This is supposed to be index.index. .index. All of my URL fours are broken. Oh, the other thing that we can test now is test now pass in Docker. So that's good. A lot of these seem a little redundant. The badge or badges? Also badge. Repo, repo! <laughs> yeah, install, don't install. Or hello, hello. <laughs> oh, that's a good one in the armchair general. I like that, I like that. Um... Um, hey, what's up, Joe Haggett? Hello, hello. Good to see you. Install, don't install. Repo, repo. Bonnie575, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. Now we're into the HTML, which is... Um... Feels slightly riskier for some reason. I don't know why. It just does. I think it was repo.new badge token. Is that it? We start. Can I build URL for login.login? You mean index.admin? Did I forget the um I forgot the login blueprint?
I wish the URLs were more type safe. Same mistake again. Typo the word sessions over and over and over. Okay, it boots now. So let's um, let's deploy this to the staging environment and take a look at it there. I ran all the linting. Yeah, so the, the today seems a little inaccurate because we are down a rabbit hole of making this more modular such that I can do things nicer. Well, blueprints, GitHub. Oh. Hey, what's up, Ethan Timing? Hello, hello. Dragon says, I just plugged my headphones in, but before that, it looked like you were updating type annotations, so I figured it was another stream like your bootstrap upgrade. Yeah, it's very similar to that. It's bas I'm basically trying to make things so I can deploy automatically and better. Oh, I should rerun the tests. Not that the tests cover all the cases, but. All right, predictions? Predictions, chat? Predictions? You want to bet some channel points? All right. Will everything work first deploy? Will everything work? I'll just say yes or no. I'll give you 60 seconds to bet on channel points. <laughs> I know what I would I know what I would bet here. I know what I would bet. <clears throat> <laughs> I know what I would bet, <laughs> unfortunately. Wow, we got a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of bets on no for this one. Got a hundred, over a hundred thousand channel points on the line here. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, here we go. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of channel points in the pot today. <laughs> I think if anything's not going to work, I bet it's going to be... Actually, wait, before we deploy this, did the Fabicon load? I didn't even try and load it. Hmm, I think the Fabicon's going to fail. Jovix, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. Uh... Dollar bang does not equal equal zero, so I think that's a yes. Mm. Alright, let's deploy to staging. Hey, what's up, Philo Pilo? Who says Ubuntu. Ubuntu! Yes, I'm running Ubuntu. So be it. Control Shift N. Yeah, there we go. 
uh, results dev dot precommit dot ci once it finishes uploading which it has we didn't drop the frames all right so first thing does the homepage load it does does the favicon load it does does the robots dot text load it does okay things are working so far <laughs> can we log in it's totally two. Grab it from my password manager. Paste. All right. Does the login work? Login works. This page works. Does the install page work? Install page works. Does the repo page work? Repo and the badge works. Let's see about private badges. These also look like they're working. Also looks like they're working, chat. Uh, let's make sure clicking on this link redirects properly. It does. And the run page is working. Oh man. <laughs> this is looking like a yes, chat. I haven't found anything broken yet. This is. Surprising. All right, let's rotate the token. Surely that'll be something that maybe breaks. Okay, so it's F5VO before. And if we click rotate, the flash message there. And it changed it. That seems good. Um, What else should I try? Should I try run? And we'll do a run, yeah. Um, the runs are the most important part. I'm definitely go definitely going to be watching the air logs after this <laughs> for a while, cause um, yeah, I feel like I feel like um, <laughs> by that by says my life savings. <laughs> yep, I'm doing well, pilot pilot. Alex Pocan says I should have bet more. <laughs> Adriana says, good to see Chad, including me, seem to be wrong. Ooh. But Haga says, what's the token and the badge you're all for? So for private repositories, um, there's a token to hide it. It doesn't really matter. Like, I don't think anyone actually cares about repositories being, go away, being um, known. Um, but other CI providers do a similar thing. So basically just following that. Uh, Angle says, too bad I only invested 3k on yes. Actually, what were the stats? Does somebody, does somebody know what the stats were on that? All right. So that looks good. And then it should rerun another one. The run that just happened. And then there's the auto fix. Quick. I know it's red, but that's intentional. So it's working. Um, let's do... Recommit CI run. Does the comment trigger work? Yep, it does. Cool. I'm thinking, I'm thinking everything worked. 1 to 11, says Garrus. Oh my god. <laughs> You're definitely testing against dev? Yep, yep. See, this is um, results dash dev. This is what I just deployed. Oh, uh, we can do the version endpoint, and I forgot to test that one. That one looks good. Well, this doesn't tell the code version. Uh, I might have to log in AWS for that, but you can see we deployed it here. Um, let's see, what other blueprints do we have to try? We need to log out. Let's do log out, make sure that works. If I recall correctly, you can only do it from this page. Yep, that worked. Relogging in should work as well. Cool. Um, so we tried the badge endpoint. We tried private badges. We tried the latest endpoint. We didn't do the latest badge endpoint. Oh yeah, we did. We clicked on it. So that works. Uh, we did login and we did some of the webhooks. So we know those work. Um, we didn't do the special admin page but I don't really care if that's broken. 
Oh, we can't see the admin page because I'm not me. <laughs> only only Ace Attili can see that. Ace Attili 2 cannot. 1 to 15? Wow. Wow. Broken chat wins? No, it's supposed to work that way. See? Uh, 404. Oh, wait, I'm logged out. Wait, username... Oh, wait, this should have worked. I think that's broken already, though. I don't think that changed. Oh, it's slash all. Not slash admin. Okay, okay. Slash all. There we go. See, it works. Writing some Selenium tests for this would be nice. Yeah, I plan to do that at some point. Um, probably maybe not Selenium because I don't I don't know that actually doing you know, Selenium might be fine. Um, but yeah, I want to get to continuous deployment at some point where it runs all these steps. Um, but yeah, this this is still still working correct. I just had the wrong URL. Do Cypress, not Selenium. I have a lot of experience with Selenium, so I would probably just do Selenium. Who did the install route? Um, oh, we should try making sure that private repos will fail. I'm pretty sure those work. Um, oh, we should try logging in from a page that's not the primary page. Let me get um, a proper redirect. So let's do that. Log out, and then this is this should 403 because we don't have access to this. Um, why am I still logged in? Oh, because it redirected through the login. <laughs> Clever. Yeah, so this redirects to the login when you're logged out. Yeah, let's do it on this page, which doesn't redirect through login after I log out. Okay, so I'm not logged in now. I can click this login button. It should take me to this page. Yep, cool. 1 to 15 seems fair considering the chance of it working was also 1%. Yeah, yeah. Jam says I want my babbies back. Well, it's looking like you're going to lose them. Uh, install name. Yeah, let's do that. I don't expect that to fail, though. Install GitHub Acetilly2. Uh, we did log in and log out. Did repo. We rotate the badge token. Didn't do the redirect. Let's do that. Uh, repo GitHub Acetally2 demo. If I typoed my own name. There we go. Uh, Renzo Marquez, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully you are doing well. Did the run endpoint. Nothing against Anthong, but larger factors are super risky. That's why we got good. That's why we got good linting and stuff. We did these. And we did version. I think it. I think it works, Chad. All right. Slash prediction. Six percent said yes. Oh my god. Choose outcome. Oh, there's gonna be a lot. A lot of points are changing hands here. Complete prediction. Are you sure yes is the correct outcome? Holy shit, 120,000 channel points. <laughs> oh. See details. Oh my goodness. 16 to 1. <laughs> Wow. 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 <laughs> Marie Mary says 1k vet got 16.k. Wow. <laughs> You'll switch the keyboard a lot of times. <laughs> Wilson, you won 48,000 points? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right. Refactor to blueprints and lazy... Initialization. Initialization. All right. <clears throat> Redeploy to staging. AK1, not bad for a 500 bet. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> true, true. Well, I was hoping we would have more than one channel point bet here, but it looks like we're only going to get one. <laughs> Um, all right, 
And the Planet Pride would really log into AWS and watch the logs. Let me do that. Indie Breaker. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. God, I'm so bad at these captures. I am actually a robot. Free CW? Question mark? Oh, I got it right. Sick. Pinkle, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Paste. And... MFA. Great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Um, boom, 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 boom. I don't know why I do this off screen. You can still see my keyboard. Okay, so I want to make sure that I am looking at CloudWatch and I don't have an alert for this yet. I really should set one up. But we want to make sure that this web looks good. Wow, lots of requests. <laughs> um, results.pigment.ci. Loads, pretty good. Peagle says, hi, how's everything? Well, you have set the MOTD, so now anyone who does bang MOTD in chat says, hi, how's everything? <laughs> it's good, it's good. Hopefully you're doing well. It's good. Usually MOTD gets set to MOTD. So. <laughs> That's um, a little different there. Do, do, do. Yay. It work. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to watch this today make sure things look good but for the most part seems seems fine all right so now let's do the other part of this that i want to do which is to run um run stuff in ci wow <laughs> 1328 insertions a thousand deletions that's some that's some big time change right there um Uh, this is my crypto investments all over again. Bye bye, Fabi says Pythonic Pie. <laughs> yeah, you should have gone with yes. To, yes was to the moon. Uh, okay. So I renamed this to Bot Repo Token, I think. I think I can show that on stream without it showing the tokens. Risky clicks, chat. Risky clicks. Yeah, bot repo token. Okay, cool. And I actually have to go through all the repos and um, undo the creds that I set up yesterday because we don't need those anymore. I only did it on the private repos. Didn't do it on Terraform. Oh, it's gonna be annoying. Why does it move? <laughs> yeah, wait, why did it move? Oh, because these have wikis enabled. Why do you have wikis enabled? No. Secrets. And wait, what? Oh, this one I didn't set it for. Okay, org secrets, cool. Sable wikis and secrets. Oh, it's gonna be annoying. <laughs> Remove Sable wikis secrets. Move, yes. Oh man, I wish I could script this, but I think by the time I wrote a script, I would just be done. So unfortunately, we're gonna be we're gonna be clicking around a little bit. Okay, wiki secrets move yes. <laughs> Wikis secrets move yes. Wiki secrets. Remove 
Yes. Oh, this one already has wikis gone. How did I delete that one? That must have been why it was different with. Script, if you're cool. Hey, what's up, Kid Queb? How's it going? I mean, I'm only ever going to do this once, so. And I don't think there's an API for deleting secrets. I could be wrong, but I don't think there is. Secrets, remove, yes. Okay. Should have all those cleaned up now. All right, but bot repo token. This should this should get to this step. This step should fail now because I don't have one hundred percent coverage. What's in misc? Oh, this was um one of the band users. Don't need that. Okay, so I know this is gonna fail, so we're not gonna vet channel points on it, but um <clears throat> The Stitches says, Can you describe the purpose of frequency I for relatively new devs? Well fortunately there's a little blurb at the top of it that talks about why you would want to do this. Um uh, which I'll read, but then I'll I'll go into more details. Uh, developers spend a fair chunk of time during their development flow on fixing relatively relatively trivial problems in their code. Precommit CI both enforces that these issues are discovered, which is often for each developer's workflow via precommit, but also fixes the issues automatically, letting developers focus their time on more valuable problems. So basically, it takes precommit, which is a linter and code formatter framework, and makes it work really really well in CI. Um, some of the things that it does is, I mean, you don't need a configuration beyond the one you're already using, so you generally don't have to set up fiddly CI system configs. Um, the big one is that it auto fixes your pull requests for you. So if you made a formatting mistake, it'll just auto fix the formatting for you. And it's super fast. The other thing is it'll auto update your config for you. Because generally you put versions in your pre-commit configuration. Um, but yeah, that's that's mostly most the idea there. Hey, what's up, Fallen Cato? Hello, hello. What are we what are we doing today? Well, I spent three hours <laughs> refactoring my um the pre-commit CI web repo to be easier to write tests for. And um yeah. It was a lot. Uh filter loaded log streams. Search all. Did that go somewhere? Uh, we want to search for error. And we'll see if things come up there. This is what I'm going to watch for the rest of the day. Yeah. Linting automatically? Yep, linting and auto fixing. Ooh, errors. What is this from? What item? That seems not good. N26. Oh, that's like really fucking old. <laughs> that's really fucking old. We want today. We want one hour. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Wow, I'm surprised the logs go back that far. Um. Okay, but yeah, this should have failed. Go to, oh, I didn't want to close that. Here, this is where the failure should be. This should fail because of coverage, not because of the tests. It should have run the tests. Yeah. Yep. 39% um... <laughs> coverage. Yeah, my, my coverage is not great. I do need to improve that a lot. But the test did pass, so that's that's a step in the right direction. Man, it's really annoying that uh, these aren't co colored in tests. Um, okay, um, but let's do setup.cfg coverage. Wait. Um, oh, because it's zero, it assumes that's the default, right? So if I do 30, 
um, then this will work. Or will it? Do we want to bet channel points? No, this is definitely going to work. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, on the first channel point prediction, I would have bet no, so the fact that some of you believed in me when I didn't believe in myself is is pretty pretty amazing. Look at that. Pigment CI, even faster than running the tests. Like way faster. It <laughs> it barely even set up Python by that point. Well, all the dependencies. Oh, I'm installing a yanked package? Hold up. What package is yanked? The clan it's selected for download and install is a yanked version. Flask WTF is yanked. Why did Flask WTF get yanked? Flask WTF get... Um, I like how everything here is updated four days ago. Um, so this one down at the bottom. Okay, so they dropped everything before Python 3.6, so it doesn't actually affect me. Cool. I can ignore that. I like to call yanked yoinked. <laughs> yeah. Fear of Code says, you know it's better than having to pull dependencies and having so many files, it's easier to put code in a Docker image? A natively compiled, statically linked, executable, and all dependencies checked into version control. Yeah, but then your version control is real chunky. You know? Okay. This passes now. So that's good. That's kind of what I wanted to get done-ish. I want to also get a deploy working, but for that I need S3 credentials, or AWS credentials. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so here's your choices, chat. We can continue working on this because you'll get to see Tofu in a few minutes, or we can end the stream. What do you want? Tofu will realistically be here in, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, Jason White says, gonna go to sleep till the next time you don't stream at 3 a.m. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, by the way, on Monday, we're gonna be streaming earlier because it's a holiday in the U.S., so we're gonna be streaming earlier. Let's keep going. Of course, of course, Chad would say keep going. <laughs> by the way, Pi says I need to rebuild my babies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try and get this to automatically deploy when we merge to master. That seems like a thing that I could do. Um, in order to do that, I need to set up AWS credentials in this. So let's see. We're going to log into my other AWS account, the dev account. We'll get the dev account deploying. That's what I want to do. Yes, that's my goal. My new goal. Are you fucking kidding me? What the hell is this supposed to be? <laughs> Do you see this shit? I swear, I am a fucking robot. There's no way that that looks reasonable. Um, Super early stream? Yeah, indeed. Tomato Potato Fried says, I pooped and it felt great leaving my body. Cool. Cool, dude. I mean... All right, do you think this is an R chat? We're gonna we're gonna guess it's an R. R two N X G W. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> I'm not a robot today, Chad. I'm two for two. Two for two. Which is kind of kind of amazing. I think it might just be luck though. Um. I 
Okay, so we need to set up service counts, I think. I don't remember how those work. Can I set them up with Terraform? Maybe? Um, I believe it's in the IM panel. We have users. Okay, so we create a user. What are you mad about? What is this? What is the warning? Oh, you're supposed to rotate them every 90 days? Mm -hmm. That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Joking says, I feel like in the distant cyberpunk future, street signs and newspapers will be printed in CAPTCHA font. <laughs> Fuck you, robots! Well, CAPTCHAs are ineffective. Like, machine learning models are pretty good at answering them. <laughs> so they're already kind of ruined. At least the text-based ones. Honestly, I think I could make a machine learning model that's better at answering AWS CAPTCHAs than I am at answering AWS credentials, or AWS CAPTCHAs. Assuming I had a good set of inputs and outputs. Okay, so I think that I want an IAM user here. I'm gonna, hold on a sec, because I don't want to show the keys. Um... How do I... Why does this work? Security credentials. Oh yeah, it totally shows the keys. Okay. Well, good thing I didn't do that. Okay, so I need to make an IM user that has a particular role, I think. Yeah, which I think we can do in Terraform. I think we can do in Terraform. Um, Marco Gorelli says, I'm pretty sure you could make ML models better than most of the data science. Yeah, I don't, I don't even make machine learning models. <laughs> I don't know if that's strictly true, but I don't know. I would probably be all right at it if I tried. Okay. Terraform, Terraform. What is index2.html? What the fuck was I doing? <laughs> Why? Why though? <laughs> Why? Why did I do this? I'm user that can assume role on your IAM role, and the IAM role needs permissions to update Lambda. I think I can just attach update Lambda directly to the uh, to the user, right? Can you attach permissions to the user? Maybe? Adriana says, loving your streams. As somebody not that proficient in Python yet, I do not quite understand everything, but I feel like I learn at least a little bit. Good, good. Well, if you want to learn more, I would recommend checking out my YouTube channel, in particular the Explain playlist, where there's a lot of good, well, there's, there's over almost two days of educational content in this playlist, in all sorts of topics from Python to DevOps to Linux to Git to whatever you want to learn. Um, and if you want me to answer more things, you just ask questions and then I make videos about them. So you can uh, you can check those out there. You can attach the role, but I believe your IAM user still needs assume role. Oh. Hmm. Terraform IAM user. Is there not a inline policy document for this? Because that would be way easier. Yeah, IAM user policy. Yeah, I can just attach a user policy directly. That's way easier. Way easier. Yeah, we're just going to do that. No need to make a full roll for all of these. Uh, user lambda deploy, not terraform. 
resource AWS I am user lambda deploy name equals lambda deploy right permissions boundary don't know what that is don't need any of this other stuff. And then we can do AWS IAM user policy. Resource AWS IAM user policy. Uh, Felon Cato says, I understand very little of the actual coding stuff that goes on here, but I learn a bit every stream and it's just really fun to hang out here. Indeed, indeed. Shavan says you have 53 days and seven hours of content on YouTube. Yeah, most of it is replays of streams. But <laughs> you, you could literally watch me for a month fucking straight and not get through everything, which is just wild. Just wild. And uh, deploy. Uh, Nestlin, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you are doing well. Name. Why do I need a name for that? AWS. What's the difference between these two? Why is an iron policy attached to a user? I feel like this is a thing that I'm running into somewhere else. I feel like this is something I'm running into somewhere else. Hmm. But I guess I need all of these? Oh no, this is just Neo's IAM policy. This is the actual user policy. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this. Hey, what's up, Nestle? Um, Indie Breaker says, I understand my fair share of Python, but still learn new stuff too. It's pretty great. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're learning. That's always good. Okay, policy required name optional. Don't need a name. Don't need a name prefix. We do need a user. User equals address. I am user dot lambda lamb lambda deploy dot name. Darn. Name. And then policy equals. It's been a while since I have terraformed. Um, data areas I am policy document lambda deploy. Statement. I don't remember which one this is, but we'll look it up. And we're actually going to give it star here, which is a little bit broad, but oh, you know where we can find that? My Pokemon project <laughs> has used this particular action. Where is that? Shiny Pokemon Scraper. Terraform roll lambda update function code. Uh, that's what we want here. And it'll reformat that for me. I don't really care. AWS I am policy dot policy. Data dot AWS IAM policy documents dot lambda deploy dot JSON. Okay, that should in theory give us our lambda deploy user. Uh, the other server, how's it going? How are you? Everything red and modified? It looks like you've been busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did like plus 1300 minus 1100 change earlier today. Yep, still streaming. Still streaming. Hey, what's up, Simplex? And Shaz Robot, good to see you. 
tuning in right before we get to see Tofu, in theory. Um, let's just do a plan. Uh-oh. Unexpected comma after arugament. I have been writing way too much basil. That's what it is. I've been writing way too much basil. You refactor everything? Yeah, it's now in blueprints. It's now everything in blueprints. Tovu? Tovu is Juicebox Zero's pupperoo. Uh, in all repos, is there an option to clone via HTTPS instead of SSH? There is not. Um, but if you're cloning by HTTPS, you probably don't want to do that. Because it means you're typing your password over and over and training yourself to do the wrong thing. You should really be cloning over HTTPS. Okay, so yeah, this is the thing that keeps flapping. And these arms are the same. So I don't understand why this keeps flapping. Like this is really annoying. <laughs> really annoying. I don't understand why. Actually, there's another one that keeps flapping. It's not just this one. This is just one of the ones that flaps. Then I don't get it. I don't understand why it does this. Uh, Felgetto says, I've started learning JavaScript, HTML, CSS, coding a while back, but only got through a few lessons before getting stuck. So pretty much all of this goes over my head. Uh, but there are some things that spark a memory of those three languages. It's cool to learn a bit of the fourth language too. Yeah, well, if you want to ask questions about what you're stuck on, the Discord is a good place to ask questions. What's the advantage of Blueprints over normal app.route? In my case, I needed to lazily instantiate the app, so Blueprints were a good, a good fit for that. Uh, but Blueprints also let you split things up into a bunch of files. So I did all of that. Good plug. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for the link, Shaz. Um, well, the plan works, so we'll just yeet it. Flapping, so it, it, this this is a no op. This is, nothing's going to change here. Um, this invocation type is always going to be event, which is the default. But for some reason, it thinks this is changing, even though these are the same. Um, this default changed from event to something else, but I I don't think it did. Uh, would you when you update the lambda code, it publishes a new version which might update the suffix on the rn? No, the rn is always the same. The function rn is always the same. Um, in fact, you can see it here. This value is the same as this value here. Like one or er, account ID, function, emails. There's no, there's nothing else there. Oh, so, I don't, I don't know why this one changes. My guess is that the API for AWS changed slightly and I'm using an old version of the AWS provider or something. Um, actually, we can verify that, right? There's like a dot Terraform. Um, and I can do, oh, actually it'd be the remote provider. So I actually can't, I don't know. It's for, it's for me to figure out some of the day. And user for deploying Lambda. And of course the Brinkman hooks fixing the things for me. Nice play, I'll still check it out though, but maybe once a month summer break, so I'll have more time to learn. I mean, you could always just join the Discord. Good place to hang out. Just saying. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Terraform. I'm not logged in. This one logs you out really, really aggressively. It kind of makes sense. Like, these are important resources to not be, you know, repeatedly logged out, but... It's still kind of annoying. Like real, real annoying. Mm. 
Just that. I want to run first. Let's open up prod. Alright, dev. See here, the plan doesn't have the, the flap. So I don't I don't understand. I don't get it. Um but yeah, let's do that. Shaz says, I still can't figure out how to get the secrets for my Discord bot to Heroku from config.json. I'm probably going to beat my head against it until I figure it out. I haven't ever done anything like this. I actually haven't done secrets in Heroku either. So you're you're in uncharted territory. But if you get stuck and you want to ask questions, I'm happy to help you with it. Uh, Johaya says, I agree with your suspicion now. Re an older provider version. Yeah. Remove the dot .terraform in it. So the thing is, my plan is running remotely. Well, I'm, it's been blown over now. I think the plan is running remotely because when I run TF plan, it's like running in the remote backend. Output will stream here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> don't know. Broker secrets are just embers. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see we, we get the plan difference here. Okay, you're saying if I armref dot terraform and terraform knit, I don't think that's gonna make a difference. But I can do it. I can certainly do it. I don't know why this takes forever to tear down. Alright, so you're saying if I armref dot terraform and then I run this again. Okay, so that says in it is required, and we ter terraform in it. That'll download our providers. And so now if I do have plan, it should do this. It should work. The thing is, I was also seeing that flapping in the remote runner. But maybe that was due to caches? Rooks? All right, let's see. What do we got here? Yeah, it's still flapping, so I don't know. I don't know, man. It's problem for no it's, it's problem for another day. Yeah, see it's not flapping here. Okay, so this should have created the user. So we should be able to go here and see another user. Okay, we see this. And I'm going to make the key off screen. Um the access key. Okay. Let me configure this in secrets as well. That's not how you get to the settings panel. Secrets. Uh. Lambda, lambda deploy EID. Out. And then. Lambda deploy key secret. Oh, that's a weird secret. It's a slash character at the beginning, which is weird to me. Um, but yeah, okay, so that, that should be configured now. So you can see I have bot repo token, lambda deploy key ID, and lambda deploy key secret. We're going to try and use those in CI. In theory. Um... No, don't use Pedantic. You don't need Pedantic. Pedantic is super overkill. <laughs> Literally just a JSON from string to string. And I'm pretty sure you can just put a JSON blob in an environment variable and then load from a JSON blob. Pretty sure that's that's going to be the easiest way to do it. But please don't add a dependency on Pedantic. I don't need it, and I don't want it. Um... Okay, so now we have that. 
So... Yeah, so Hayden, the, the plan is to run... The plan is to run my bot on Discord. And so Shaz is making a little bit of glue code to deploy my bot to Discord, or to Heroku, so that it can run on Discord. That's 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 what's going on there. Okay, so now we're gonna make another set of GitHub Actions. Let's actually delete whatever branches we have that are merged. Which is all of them, it looks like. All right. Uh, GitHub deploy. Okay, um, what do you need? You need packaging. The music has stopped. I would have thought Tofu would have been here by now. Traffic must be awful. Where Mel went to the grocery store or something, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, we'll make a deploy where you live. Actually, you wanna see something sneaky? Oh wait, it's gonna be slightly different, never mind. I was gonna make it pick the deploy the virtual I was gonna do some sim like magic. Uh we don't need that. Deploy VMV uh packaging. I basically just need to install packaging. And script to set up deployment VM, which actually means I can remove packaging from a bunch of requirements files. But VM bin Python script slash lambda. Hmm. How do artifacts work? Um, GitHub actions artifacts. Artifacts allow you to share data between jobs and a workflow and store data once that workflow has completed. Let's build logs and artifacts for 90 days. Okay, cool. Um, presumably I have some amount of storage here. Artifacts are uploaded during a workflow run. Oh, uh-oh. There's Paparu here. Uh-oh. Oh, who's a little Paparu? Hi, Kobo. Hey, down. Hit. It. Oh, you're such a good puppy. Here, you want to say hi to the camera? Look, look who we got. Look who we got, chat. We got a pupperoo. We got a stinky pupperoo. We got a stinky pupperoo. Hi. Hi, puppy. You look so different. What happened, Tofu? What happened to your face? Where'd your face go? She didn't chomp me. She's less chompy now. She didn't chomp me, chat. And if she chomps, just say nice. She does? Oh, did you the bump on her neck? Here was one. Oh. 
I see. Okay, cool. Anyway, there's the bumper room. I <laughs> She's less <Right>. chompy. <laughs> Press X to down on that right. one. Alright, do you want to go hiking now? Should I, nice. should I finish up the stream? Your shirt's very unbuttoned. Oh, it was, yeah. The keyboard. No. Leave it. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up stream. Ow. We'll work on this later. Sit. Maybe we'll work on this tomorrow. I don't know. Um, down. But yeah, my name is Anthony. Uh... You can check out my previous content on youtube.com slash anthonywritescode where you can find educational videos. I gave a talk recently, so you can check this one out. Uh, you can also find previous streams if you missed those. And I normally stream on Mondays and Saturdays. And I announce my streams in two places. One of those is twitter.com slash codewithanthony. So follow me on Twitter. Get notified of stuff like this. Um, or join the Discord. So there's YouTube, Twitter... Discord, so you can check out those links. Hi! Hi, Stinker! Ow! Um, but yeah, thank you all for stopping by. Let's go find someone to raid. <laughs>